Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Bakersfield, California. Here's the voice of the runners, Corey Costello. And welcome into Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. I'm Corey Costello. Thanks so much for joining us once again on the program. We have a great show for you today. We're really busy, but a lot of great stuff to get to on the program. Of course, CSUB Baseball. Big in the news right now. Runners playing pretty darn well as they uh, close in on first place in the Western Athletic Conference. we got a couple young men that are a part of that success coming up on the program in the next segment. We'll be speaking with Joey Sanchez and uh, and David Metzger, a couple uh, well, super sophomores for the most part, doing a great job for the Roadrunners, so we'll chat with them coming up in the uh, next segment of the program as we talk about uh, the Roadrunners winning their series against Seattle last weekend. They've got a non-conference game tonight. Then back in Western Athletic Conference, play their final conference series of the season at home uh, this weekend against Northern Colorado. So we'll be talking with them about that. Also coming up at the bottom of the hour, our uh, the month of April is nearly uh, coming to a close. And so Josiah Castro will join us as we uh, kind of recap all the initiatives that we've had going on in the month of April with the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. And uh, we'll kind of recap that and uh, put Push, push for a uh, just more uh, more involvement from the community, and that's uh, this final uh, the uh, bottom of the hour uh, on the program. So we'll chat more about that. Also coming up on the show in uh, the last segment, we're going to be speaking with Carnell Grimes, a uh, CSUB javelin thrower, just hit the 200 foot mark. First guy to do it since I think it was 2010, and one of a just handful to do it in the history of the Roadrunners. As he is doing a very nice job and climbing his way up the standings in the Western Athletic Conference as well as they get ready for their championship meet in a couple weeks. So. We'll be speaking with Carnell as well. Great story. Matter of fact, speaking of baseball, he started as a baseball player in 2011 and then kind of made the transition to track and is a heck of a javelin thrower now. So we will chat with him about all that coming up a little bit later on the uh, on the program. So a lot of stuff to get to on the show. And, of course, we will uh, have highlights and recaps of last week's action. And matter of fact, that is what we will go to right now as we start with CSUB Baseball Roadrunners. We're at home. Let's start with Wednesday's game against Cal State Fullerton, and uh, speaking of Joey Sanchez, this is the first pitch he saw in the entire game. Uh, right back at you. Uh, up the middle, a uh, RBI single for Sanchez as uh, Bakersfield would take the early lead, and uh, it was a big day for uh, for Joey Sanchez, but a lot of roadrunners getting in on the action as well, including Solomon Williams. But the problem for uh, for this, uh, this Cal State Fullerton squad was this. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of balls being kicked around the infield. Seven errors in the ball game for Cal State Fullerton. That led to 10 unearned runs for the Roadrunners as uh, Bakersfield, well, they did their own part, though, hitting the baseball as well because the runners definitely uh, took advantage of every single thing that the Titans gave them, and then when they did open the door, they walked right through it. Here's Miles Jones with the RBI single going into right field, so Bakersfield puts up a uh, crooked number early in the ball game as they lead it 2 to nothing and continue to roll the Roadrunners now. Here's uh, Joey Sanchez once again. This is the second pitch he saw in the ball game. Guess what? In the third inning, he is going to score two more. So two pitches and three RBIs. That's not too shabby. Later in the ball game, Logan Trowbridge. This should be an easy. No, it's not an easy double play because Fullerton had issue doing that all night. Two runs score on the play. And uh, yeah, runners up seven to nothing. And it continues as well. This one going to the left side. Nice backhanded play. This ball will be out number one in the inning, but a run does score. And then Miles Jones, once again, the bloop single to right field. That'll score a run for CSUB as well as the Roadrunners continue to roll. Max Carter scoring there for CSUB. And then uh, why not? Once again, Joey Sanchez. How about a double this time? Let's make this one just bounce off the fence, shall we? A couple more runs score here. Roadrunners up 11-1 to at this point. Bakersfield rolls in this game over Cal State Fullerton, their first win over the Titans, 14-1. to they, they just weren't done, though. They were adding a few more here and there. This will get an out, but this will also score a run. Nick Vaywald uh, out in the rundown, but the runners score another run. So Bakersfield dominating in their Wednesday game against Fullerton. How about we go to Friday, a conference series against Seattle. Good defense. Early runners getting out of a jam. Hayden Carter would pitch out of a first-inning jam there with the ground ball the first, and the Roadrunners then in the bottom half of the inning, they are going to take the lead. This base hit going to the right side. 
This is David Metzger dropping it down. And oh, my goodness. The airs continue for opponents at hard field. This one bouncing over the right center fielder, or over the uh, right fielder's head, and two runs score on the play for the Roadrunners. Early lead. Another RBI coming up right after that. Bakersfield up three to nothing. That was Max Carter with the RBI single. There he is on first base. So the Roadrunners jumping out to that one, and uh, they would win that first game of the series. They would win the second game of the series as well. So 14 to 1 over Fullerton to get the victory on Wednesday in non conference action. And then Friday night, the Roadrunners. Uh, all over Seattle, five nothing. Another shutout for Hayden Carter, who stretched his scoreless streak to 30 innings on the bump. That is uh, that is pretty impressive. Runners then taking the series on Saturday. Bakersfield with a 10-5 win over Seattle. That was an interesting one, but the runners scoring four runs in the eighth to uh, hold off a late Seattle charge. They went at 10 to five, and then the Red Hawks. So second week in a row, runners going for that Sunday sweep. Couldn't quite get it done. Seattle blanks uh, CSUB on Sunday. Four to nothing. So the Roadrunners had uh, b first place briefly, and then you got Grand Canyon out there who is not eligible for the conference tournament, but they're still in first place right now, although they played a game less than everybody else because of a rainout. N needless to say, here it is, pretty much all locked up for first place. Seattle at 13 and 5, CSUB 12, 4 and 1. Here's the interesting part Seattle's at Grand Canyon this week, CSUB's at Grand Canyon in a couple weeks. So all these teams up top are going to play each other by the end of the next two weeks. We're going to have a lot of movement, and right below that, 11 and 7. Northern Colorado comes to Hartfield this weekend. So uh, these top four teams, and including the three that are eligible for the conference tournament, are going to be battling out here in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of movement still to be had in the conference standings. Here's what's coming up for the Roadrunners. Bakersfield will be at home tonight. Non-conference game against Cal Poly at 6 p.m. Been a couple years since the Runners got a W over the Mustangs. Very good program. We'll see if the Runners turn that around tonight. 6 o'clock at Hartfield. And then the Roadrunners back at home this weekend. This is Western Athletic Conference play hosting Northern Colorado at 6 on Friday, 6 on Saturday, Sunday at noon. You can watch all the games as well right here on Bakersfield.com. So that's what the runners have coming up on the baseball side of things. Let's switch over to softball, shall we? A similar sport played with a uh, smaller diamond and a larger uh, larger object. Runners winning the first game in Seattle, 11-9. to This was their final conference series, regular season series. So they beat the Red Hawks 11-9 on Friday in the first game of the doubleheader. Game two of the doubleheader not going the runner's way. A four-run inning in the second for Seattle pretty much puts them up for good in that one. So they win the second game of Friday's doubleheader, 7-2. to two. And then the Roadrunners, though, bouncing back as Kelsey Monroe has a solid outing for the Roadrunners as they win the finale, 5-2. to two. Monroe, once again, a uh, she got her 19th win of the season. That's the most for a CSUB pitcher since 2010. All right, so no more games for the Roadrunners they, uh, as far as regular season goes. These are the standings, and this is how it's going to play out in Las Cruces. Not this week, but next week in the conference tournament. New Mexico State, number one at 14-1. and one. Kansas City, 7-7. Seven and seven. They're the two seed. Runners at 7-8. and eight. They're the three seed. So what's going to happen is uh, New Mexico State has a first round by CSUB and Kansas City play each other. Seattle and Utah Valley will play in a sort of playing game. The winner will get New Mexico State. So Bakersfield on the opposite side of New Mexico State. And by the way, that one in New Mexico State's uh, name is uh, is because of the Roadrunners. They beat them before as uh, Bakersfield will uh, play Kansas City, as I mentioned, in the first round Thursday, May 7th at New Mexico State in the double, uh, double elimination Western Athletic Conference tournament. So that's what CSUB softball has coming up on the horizon. Horizon, and uh, like I said, a week off for them. They'll get their uh, their pitchers ready to go for the conference tournament next week in Las Cruces, New Mexico. By the way, next week on the program, we'll uh, we'll do a lot of preview of the conference tournament for CSUB softball. So look forward to that. All right, uh, we're going to step away. By the way, one note, and I brought it up briefly, but congrats to Carnell Grimes to be our guest in 1045. Uh, he was uh, one of the top finishers for CSUB at the Bulldog Invitational up at Fresno State last weekend, throwing uh, finishing fourth place, throwing a uh, hit in the 200-foot mark in the javelin. Very impressive. We'll talk with him about that coming up at the end of today's program. But we're going to step away and take a break. we got some baseball to talk about. David Metzger, Joey Sanchez is going to join us next in studio. Stick around. We shall be back. This is Roadrunner Rundown. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. And no matter what school you go to, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. 
Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californian's daily deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. Support CSUB Roadrunner Athletics at the 43rd Annual Spring Barbecue. Thursday, May 14th at the Accardo Center. Join us for dinner featuring Harris Ranch, New York Steak, and Teriyaki Chicken. And stay for live entertainment featuring Foster Campbell and Friends, along with special guest Truxton Mile. Tickets are $30 in advance and available at Mexicali. Bonds, all lengthwise locations. The 43rd Annual CSUB Athletics Spring Barbecue. Thursday, May 14th from 5.30 to 9 at the Accardo Center. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference. CSU Bakersfield. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. Uh, still to come on the program, Josiah Castro, bottom of the hour. We'll uh, recap what has been a uh, pretty successful uh, runner April, so we'll chat with him about that. Also, Carnell Grimes going to join us in the studio, hitting the 200-foot mark in the Javelin this past weekend, uh, just in time, too, as the conference uh, championships coming up in a couple weeks, so we'll chat with him about that a little bit later in the program. But it is, uh, it is we're continuing baseball season, the eight-game homestand. We're right in the middle of it. Uh, four games coming up this week for the CSUB Roadrunners. Joining us now in studio, third baseman Joey Sanchez, second baseman David Metzger. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. How are you been? Pretty good. Thank you for having good. us. Thanks for having us. Well, first of all, congratulations on a series win. I know you would have liked this sweep, but uh, you've won pretty much each year last four conference series now. Um, and it just seems it seems like at least Fridays and Saturdays, you know, Sundays have been a different animal, but you guys have really come out with a, with a purpose and kind of a mindset of you what you need to do to get the job done. Yeah, you know, um, probably a month ago, we were we're in a little cold, cold streak, and uh, we had a little team meeting about it because, you know, we needed to figure it out going into the conference. And uh, we had that team meeting, and ever since then, we've just been on a hot streak and just kept it rolling, and we all contributed, and we're all, we're all executing when, when the time, when, when it counts during the game, and we have runners in scoring position and stuff. So uh, we've been doing a really good job at that. And I noticed that has been something that's been key. So, I mean, David, what is the – what's, I guess, the, the mindset? What changes when you go up there knowing – I mean, because it seemed like when you were struggling a bit, everybody was up there going, I've got to hit a home run or get an extra base hit to score a run, but that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, um, well, we were struggling. We had the meeting because we weren't getting the job done. The first two conference series we uh, in New Mexico and Utah Valley, we kind of struggled. And so after the meeting um, – Going into our bats before that, I feel like we were we were going up there saying we hope that we can get a run in. Or <laughs> yeah, we weren't as confident. But after that meeting, 
we were like, we're we're playing for each other. We're here for each other. So we're gonna go up there saying we're gonna get it done. More confidence, and that's been working ever since. That's Absolutely, it. and and I think the the lineup has been solid as well. I mean, you guys have been mainstays of it. Uh, I mean, Joey, your story is great. I mean, last year you didn't play much, and here you are now. I mean, Coach Kernan said at the beginning of the year, he said. Joey Sanchez isn't a third baseman, but he's hitting the ball so well, i got to put him somewhere. Yeah. Now you've become a pretty darn good third baseman, too. I mean, what, what was the, 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 the quest kind of like for you from last year, really just seeing limited time to this year being a starter in every game? You know what, Corey? After last year's season, it was, it was a tough one for me, you know, only playing, having 10 at-bats. Yeah. You know, I took, that up, I took that very personal and to heart. And, um, you know, the summer I worked very hard, day in and day out. You know, it was, it was a mission. And, you know, it's to totally worth it because now it's paying off, and, and now I'm doing whatever I can for the team. And it just, it's a good feeling knowing that I could contribute with the team and everyone's, we're all doing well. So, But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just taking it day by day, game by game, and, you know, just focusing at the, t at the task at, at hand, you know, trying to win a co conference and uh, go, go to the conference tournament and win that. So I'm just trying to do the best I can. And it seems like, I mean, we were talking about kind of going up to the por uh, play with the purpose, but, you know, against the, in the Fullerton game, you see two pitches, you get three RBIs, uh -huh. you end up with five in the game. But, you know, you get – because you knew that guy has a first pitch straight fastball. Yeah. I mean, was that kind of – is this more of just scouting the pitchers, knowing what they have and knowing what you're looking for when you go up? Yeah, well, the first game at Fullerton, I um – I let the first pitch fastball go by, and I think 19 hitters in a row, he threw first pitch fastball. So going into that bat, I knew I was going to swing first pitch. I mean, the pitch was down the middle, so <laughs> that made it easier for me. But, um, yeah, just being more aggressive was, uh, was my plan for that day, and it worked out for me. And uh, you're both hitting well for average right now. I mean, David, you led the team last year. You're still up there again this year. I mean, what is – I mean, a lot of folks – I mean, they look at you and they go, this guy can't really be a ball player. I mean, come <laughs> on. And But you're one of the best hitters on the team and, and obviously defend, defensively as well, and we'll get to that. But, I mean, for you, what is it, uh, you know, what is what is the key to your success, I guess, uh, as, as, as a hitter and a ball player? Um, over the summer, you know, it's just you, gotta, you can't take days off because if you're taking days off, somebody out there is getting better. So you just got to stay with it, keep your mindset right, and just keep working and – I just go up there with a purpose, trying to help the team out. And when, when you seem to help the team out, you're helping yourself also. Nice. Where did you guys play uh, summer ball last year? I played for the East LA Dodgers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where were you at last year? Um, I was in San Fernando Valley playing with ATH Academy. Oh, okay. All right. Any yeah. plans for this summer yet? Anything? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stay at home, play for the <laughs> okay. Dodgers, and train twice okay. as hard. Nice. There so. you go. Um, this summer, I'm going to Mankato, Minnesota to play with the Moondogs. Oh, nice. Okay. The Northwoods League. Yes, nice. Northwoods. Nice. There you go. Well, I, and I think that uh, that's a that's the one thing that baseball has really that no other sport really does. I mean, you get the opportunity to keep playing yeah. during the summer and go play with these Wood Bat League teams and things like that. I mean, what does that kind of add to? I mean, it, obviously, it helps you keep playing, yeah. but what does that add to your How does that add to your development? It just helps you fix the things that you you wanted to fix during the season and into the next season. You just work on the things, like change things up a little bit, find yourself more. And uh, uh, summer ball is really ho helpful for me. I get to find myself more and, you know, work on defensive skills and, and at the plate. You know, just more opportunities, more chances to get better. Does it help more now that the, the, the bats that you guys are using, the BB core bats, react a lot like wood? So, I mean, before, I guess back in the day, probably before you guys were even yeah. ready to play college baseball, but when the bats were really hot, I mean, you play the wood bat leagues and it didn't really count because your bat could do 90% of the work in the college game. But, yeah. I mean, now with the bats being very similar, does that probably help your approach a little bit? Um, um. I, I don't know. No, we have the same approach no matter what. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> bad or no bad, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it matters. Now, you brought up the, the defensive part. Uh, Coach Kernan, huge on defense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what does he kind of, you know, I know his philosophy, but what does he kind of, you know, say to you guys about, you know, getting the defensive work in and what are some of the keys for your, your team defensively? Because obviously you don't um, give much up. Our, um, the great plays will happen, but the great plays are actually – the plays that are routine because if you can make the routine plays you won't give the other team anything so as long as we're not giving them anything it it grades the chances of winning and uh, yeah and then i mean joe you had the you had the tough spot this year of so you know miles jones gets moved to short, shortstop yeah. He was just a magnet at third for two years. Mm -hmm. And so you jump into that spot. Obviously, expectations are high, but it doesn't seem like we missed much of a beat at all at third base. No, you know what? I, um, I played third base in high school, so I'm kind of familiar with that position. But, um, I mean, it's, it's a tough spot to fill because Miles Jones did a great job at it. But, you know, I just, I just try to do my best and trust, trust in myself and my abilities to, to get the job done in every game. So 
Some of the best plays that I always see third baseman maker when they're cheating up on the grass, which to me is suicidal. But you guys are up on yeah. the edge of the grass. Yeah. How how long do you literally have to react on a ball hit that hard on the edge of the grass? I think at most a second, <laughs> less than that. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty tough. It's called the hot corner for a reason. So yeah, you got to be ready for anything. You know, you made a great play. Was it to end the game on Saturday yeah, down behind the, line. the bag down, down the, the line? Yeah. You made the throw by the way. Look, that's a long throw. Yeah, see, I I didn't react. I I just reacted. Yeah. I got it just through. I didn't think about anything, just making the throw. And uh, usually when you don't think about it, you don't make an error. Yeah. And right there, I just I just got the ball and just threw it. <laughs> and, and was that one of those throws? Because like I said, it was a long throw. After you throw it and you just kind of be like, wow, that was <laughs> – man, that one kind of stung a little bit. I mean, that, that, was, that was a deep throw. I, I saw the flight on the ball, and I, I knew Saul's, you know, Saul's a big target. Yeah. So I knew it was going right, right towards his head. So I was like, "Yeah." How much does that help? I mean, and 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 the the guys that have played first base, you know, whether it's Max Carter, I know Ryan Grote John's played there a little bit um, when when Solomon wasn't in the lineup defensively. But how much does that help as an infielder have that big of a of a target at first base, knowing that pretty much anything within Kern County he can probably pull pull. Uh, for it's you. unreal. It just makes the diving plays even easier because you can just get rid of the ball and he'll be able to reach in any direction and catch it and stay on the base. So it's a really good help. And uh, and you were talking about spectacular plays, and David, you made your your uh, your share of them. Uh, the the Sacramento State game last Friday was amazing, and a lot of it came from the outfield, but a lot of it came yeah. from the infield as well. Um, there were some great plays made in the Irvine series, so you guys didn't win one there. But going back to that game on Friday uh, at Sacramento State, I mean, one nothing, and your defense had. I mean, your defense won that ball game. There were yeah. some hard hit balls. What was that game? How did you guys feel after that game, knowing that the defense really did win that? Uh, I mean, Leto, Leteo was a he's a he's a guy. Mm -hmm. He's a really good pitcher, and we got we got one on him. So the only the only way we can win a game with so little runs is you don't give them anything, absolutely nothing. And our defense definitely stepped in and didn't give them a thing, and they had to make good plays and not give them anything. So it yeah. really helped out. Yeah, it was a, it was a great game to to see and to call and to, and to be a part of because I you don't see that very often. One nothing yeah. in college baseball, especially yeah. with two really good pitchers, two yeah. Friday night guys and Hayden Carter and Brennan Lateo for Sacramento State. So you guys uh, take two or three up there. You take two or three this past weekend. Uh, what's with Sundays? What's going on, on Sundays? Sundays just aren't <laughs> just aren't our day. Uh, what's going on with Sundays? Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not so sure. Um, hopefully, the, the, it stops this, this weekend coming <laughs> this up. You know, but uh, it's been going on for this all season, even last year too. Sundays yeah. haven't been our days, but um, I, I really don't know, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you. Maybe you should have another team meeting just to address Sundays. Yeah, yeah. we need to have a Sunday meeting to address what's going yeah, on. I mean, to... it seems like the the uh, you know, the hitting also on Sundays just goes away a little bit. Is it tough, though, especially when you put up big numbers in the first two games, and then are you almost like Sunday? You're maybe in the back of your mind you're thinking, all right, we're okay, I got this, we've hit these pitchers. I mean, does that kind of come to play a little bit? Uh, yeah, you know what, baseball's a weird game. It's One day you could have a great game, the next day just it could tear you apart. So yeah. uh, that's it kind of go, goes into play with that. But um, I don't know, we just got to – we just gotta figure it out. Gotta figure, we gotta it, figure out. it out. Well, you're real close to the top Kernan, of the conference. Kernan standings. really hates Sundays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll bet. He no, I, like. I mean it's, it's it's definitely been a rough day to to kind of to see, especially playing so well on Friday, Saturday, and you're like, what's who's this team? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> where are these guys, where these guys come from? Uh, midweek game tonight, real quick. Uh, talk about that. Cal Poly, obviously a tough team. Uh, very always, uh, you know, they were regional last year, uh, a tough team to get by. Um, but you, you, you had that with Fullerton and you were able to pull that one out. Yeah. So, you know, what do you, you know, what do you need to do this, uh, you know, this evening here against Cal Poly to, to hopefully come out on top? Um, we're just going to keep playing the way we're playing. Uh, last time we played Poly, they whooped our butts pretty well, <laughs> but so did Fullerton. And then yeah. we returned the favor to Fullerton. So hopefully we can return the favor to Poly as well. And then Northern Colorado this weekend, yeah. uh, big series, they're right behind you. So, yep. I mean, we showed the standings. I mean, you're, the race is tight. I mean, Grand Canyon, you've got next week. Uh, you've got Northern Colorado this week, and Seattle still has to play Grand Canyon. So there's a lot going on. So you got a team yeah. behind you by just one game coming in. So uh, you know what does this uh, what does this Northern Colorado series mean? You know what? It, to me, it's just another weekend series. You know the way we've been playing. I trust our pitching 100. Mm -hmm. I trust our hitting 100. percent So if we just keep on doing what we've been doing, we'll be all right. And but we do got to fix that Sunday problem. Yeah. But uh, I think this weekend. We'll sweep them. I have no doubt in my mind we will. And, you know, the uh, the, the pitching you brought up Friday and Saturday, uh, Hayden Carter has been 
lights out. Lights and out, yeah. Yeah. it's crazy because, and I've seen him develop for four years. You guys uh-huh. have been to develop for a couple years now, just from last year to this year. But I mean, that really speaks volumes to, I think, this program and the development yeah. of players because here are guys like. Hayden Carter, James Berrigan, both came in as freshmen and had their struggles, their ups and downs, and now they're probably one of the best one-two combinations yeah, yeah. in the league Friday, Saturday real. night. Yeah, yeah, we're really impressed with them. Um, there are veterans on our team, there are captains on our team, and we expect nothing less. But Hayden Carter, he's been he's been lights out. James Berrigan is just every when I play defense while he's pitching, I know he's gonna get the job done. I mean, his strikeout ratio to innings pitch is you know unbelievable. Yeah, but uh, he's doing a hell of a job. And, and, you know, looking at this team next year a little bit, I mean, everyone's talking about, oh, there's a lot of seniors going. I keep telling folks, you know, the great part is as the younger players like yourself and David continue to develop and be really good, I'm thinking, we're not going to be in that bad of shape next year. <laughs> I mean, really, you guys got to be pretty confident even going into next season looking at whether you lose guys to the draft and then obviously the graduation, but there are still some core players oh, yeah. and even pitchers and, and field position players uh-huh. like yourself, Ryan Grotejohn being one as well. you got a pretty good core even coming back for yeah, next we, season. Oh, yeah. We, um, a lot of our pitching right now, you people mainly only see four because of the weekend because right. they've been throwing so well, but they, they haven't really seen – are sophomores in the pen or freshmen so next year we'll i think we'll be in pretty good shape because we'll be coming back with fire again yeah we saw a little bit of alec daly in the in the fullerton yeah. game he pitched very well Stephen g and, yes. and uh, garrett nimmo and some of those guys that could be starters in the years to come definitely uh definitely showing promise well joey sanchez david metzger guys thanks so much for joining us thank good you, luck Corey. tonight thank and good you. luck this weekend uh, at hartfield last uh, home conference series of the year so we'll uh, we'll see you out there thank you thank you thanks for having us all right folks we'll step away and take a break when we come back josiah castro joins us we will recap hashtag runner april when we get back this is roadrunner rundown year, Kern Schools is celebrating its 75th anniversary. And one thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. North High, open 1953. West High, 1965. Highland, 1970. Stockdale, 1991. And no matter what school is yours, we all agree, Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all Kern County. Kern Schools, now open to all Kern County residents. The Bakersfield Californian is a great read on the iPad. But did you know that the Bakersfield Californian is available on your Kindle Fire? Or how about Google's Nexus 7? The Nook? You bet. You can also read a full replica of the newspaper on your Android-powered smartphone, on Apple's iPhone, or on your laptop. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers, or just $7.99 a month. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield, California in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. Support CSUB Roadrunner Athletics at the 43rd Annual Spring Barbecue, Thursday, May 14th at the Accardo Center. Join us for dinner featuring Harris Ranch, New York Steak, and Teriyaki Chicken. And stay for live entertainment featuring Foster Campbell and Friends, along with special guest Truxton Mile. Tickets are $30 in advance and available at Mexicali. Bonds, all lengthwise locations. The 43rd Annual CSUB Athletics Spring Barbecue, Thursday, May 14th from 5.30 to 9 at the Accardo Center. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. 
The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. We're back on Roadrunner Rundown. Thanks to Joey Sanchez and David Metzger for joining us on the program. Two uh, solid sophomores for the runners. Like I said, you look at the team next season and go, huh, not uh, not too shabby with some of the uh, – you got three starters position players that are sophomores right now and uh, occasionally a uh, fourth. So I don't know. We'll see. Could be uh, could be a bright spot for the runners uh, in the ha- ahead, and they, they're leading the team in hitting right now, those two young men in studio. So uh, we will definitely see more of them, and you can see more of them tonight at Hartfield at 6, and then this weekend, Friday at 6, Saturday at 6, Sunday at noon at Hartfield against Northern Colorado. The team just one game behind them in the standings. So uh, make sure you check that out uh, as well, runners against uh, Northern Colorado this weekend. Western Athletic Conference action final whack series of the season at home. Runners play two more conference series on the road, and then of course the conference tournament in Mesa, Arizona. Welcoming back to the program now for the uh, for the final time of the month of April, Josiah Castro from the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Um, congratulations on uh, Runner April, man! It seems like it's really taken off. It really has. It's been a lot of fun. First social media campaign I've ever <laughs> had to, to manage, so it's been a good time. I've been, really enjoyed it. And we've got a lot of people, a lot of eyes on the things, and I think you know some of the the, the graphics that were created and some of the the um, just to put it on the paper what the contributions mean and show that on social media to people. I think that's been uh, that's been very helpful. That's the feedback I've received is that we're more visible than we've ever been. Uh, I think from the numbers we were just talking about it, it we, we saw a little bit of an uptick, which is good. Yeah. It's, it's what we were looking for. Yeah, let's talk about the social media campaign because there's it's still ongoing through the end of the of uh, the month, which is the end of the week. But um, really, just encouraging people to like and share uh, various posts across Facebook and Twitter and uh, engage people that normally probably wouldn't be engaged with the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. So, how did that all work out? What were some of the uh, the numbers in that? Uh, it worked out really well. You know, we had a lot of pieces. I think uh, so far we've had 39 different posts on Facebook, a little less on Instagram, and then a few more on on Twitter. Uh, you look at the numbers, we've had 558 shares on Facebook. Nice. Uh, 194 likes. Um, the, our reach is reaching into the, the 2,000 marks. So um, 23,000 marks, yeah. sorry. Um, Instagram, which has been really big, which I was really surprised with. <laughs> uh, the, the, the likes on Instagram were 1798. Wow. So, awesome. I mean, it, it, a huge number of people really just getting to be introduced. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of family members, though, seeing their kids and, and retweeting or, or uh, liking Instagram posts for their kids, which yeah. is great because I don't know if they really know how much appreciation sure. their kids have. So, uh, And then retweets. We had 183 retweets on all those different posts. Oh, good. Uh, what it equals out to for us, I think, is we had uh, more online donations than we've ever had. Which is something you've been pushing for a while, but it's hard for people, you know, it's one thing for people to buy a sweater on Amazon.com online, but if you're just going to hand your money over to the scholarship fund online, it, it might be tough for people to to, to, to really equate that to, to donation, to donating. I just don't think it's ever been done or yeah. really pushed, and so we've had more online donations this month than we've seen for the past year, yeah. which is great. Um, we had 76 either renewals or new donations oh, to awesome. the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund this year. Cool. Uh, and that's put us, uh, we've beaten out the last four Aprils uh, in money raised in April. Perfect. And we're just trying to get a little over the average for the past eight years, yeah. which we're very close to doing. So hopefully we can get a little bit of a push the last uh, few days that we have left in the month. Yeah, I mean, really, to get over the average, we're like just, we need like seven grand. $7,000. We'll say eight, just to make to make sure we totally clear the hurdle. <laughs> well, I already added a dollar to that 7000 okay. to make sure that we're over the average. So 8001 then we need to make sure we... No, but... Uh, and there's still some days left and still some opportunities for people to to get involved in. Of course, this continues. I don't want people to think that, oh, April's over, see ya. No, no, no. You guys are going all the way until July 1, essentially, right? I yeah. Mean, well, and we've talked year. about and it. you go it all year long. Yeah, year-round fundraising never ends for, yeah. for us. But yeah, uh, to... To get monies in for next year's 
uh, scholarships. It's it's the end of June. Yeah. So we're trying to get people to give by then. What April was is more of an awareness right. that hopefully May and June we'll see even more people come in that say, hey, I heard the story or I, I saw the post. We want to give. We want to donate. Yeah. And so classroom competition community were the few thing, three things we kind of focused on. We have some of those graphics, and Chris, if you can pull some of them up whenever, we'll talk about them. But uh, I know, uh, you know in the uh, community was a big one. Uh, we talked about the fiscal impact of CSUB being Division One. We talked about the help, you know, the 6,000 community service hours. Great to see um, uh, the, the swimming and diving program being nominated for Beautiful Bakersfield uh, as well. I mean, that was, that was a testament to everything going on. That was done by a community member as well. Uh, which was awesome that was the, the nominated that group and then of course all the groups that they help and and that as well and then I think the the ongoing fiscal impact what people don't talk about is the athletes that stay in the community they move here for college and then they say I'm just gonna stay they make friends they they you know whatever and they say yeah this is home to me now that's that's crazy this is a fast growing community I mean we've all known it people who've lived here their whole lives know it they've seen how booming bakersfield is in the san joaquin valley right so why would you leave if job opportunities and more and more growth are happening why would you leave and it's a great place to live great place to raise a family and the community is so loving and giving that it's just perfect for for somebody to stay right i always always throw that line in you know from tombstone when they're like twice the size of san francisco and just as sophisticated (laughs) that's us uh (laughs) so uh and, and then uh and then we talk about in competition as well. Uh, we brought this up the other day, last week. But 90 All WAC honors last year alone. Uh, 64 Division One All Americans uh, across uh, various uh, platforms. You also got 30 Division Two National Championships from back in the day. We have a 2014 WAC uh, uh, volleyball tournament championship, a 2013 WAC regular season baseball championship. And uh, it's funny. I heard someone the other day say, "You know, I really want. Hope we win the WAC." regular season championship again and i said well those are great but they don't get you into the tournament they said yeah but the trophy's better <laughs> you know it would it, nice to have both trophies in the the ad carter room for baseball both the regular season and the tournament and that's what i'm aiming for yes i think that we have a really good shot we got a really good team that's peaking at yeah. the right moment that we have a good shot of winning it yeah so i know so hopefully we'll add a few more regular season uh championships as well in the, by the end of this year uh, and also in the classroom was the third C we sort of talked about. And you can see the percentages of majors on the left-hand side and, and, and what they're majoring in and where they're going. It's nice to see some of the engineering stuff. People for years have been like, we need egg and engineering. Well, we're finally adding it. So we've got some student athletes involved in that as well. The GPA, this came up a couple weeks ago, but we just had our best GPA of record. Matter of fact, uh, over 3.0 for the quarter, first time we ever hit that. And, uh, and also the CUME, which is the active GPA of every active uh, student-athlete, is slightly below 3.0. So by the end of this quarter, potentially, that could be over 3.0 as well, which would be the highest all time. And it's a culture change. Yeah. We are really stressing our student-athletes getting their education, and we're providing them with the resources. Yeah. Uh, and one of those resources, scholarship. Right. Uh, we're bringing in bright kids that are deserving of scholarship, they're taking the challenge and they're producing, yeah. not just on the field. It's it's in the classroom. And then we talked about this a little bit. This is kind of the the final sort of where we're at. And this is what we try to hammer home. I know Josiah did a lot of research on this. Uh, what schools who were directly competing against in the Western Athletic Conference, and and you know you can you can't put us up against the Big Five or even any football conferences and say how, you know because obviously that kind of changes things. But you look at the sports scholarships offered by the teams we're directly competing against in the whack and we've got a little bit of work to do oh we're fifth yeah and and seattle use a little misleading because they offer a lot of academic scholarships on top of that so we do i mean we want to win those championships we want to bring in regular season and and and, uh, tournament championships in order to compete we have to be able to compete with scholarships that's the fastest way to grow in a competitive manner for a mid-major or or somebody in Mm -hmm. our conference People wonder well, how Grand Canyon, who is transitioning from Division Two to Division One, it can be so competitive, and they're near the top of the standings in all the sports. Uh, there's your proof right there. It's not because they, it's not because they're just really good. It's because they are got a lot of money that they're throwing at their athletic scholarships. If you can fully fund sports. You can be very competitive in a short amount of time. Yes. Well, you're providing opportunities. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's the difference between us recruiting Grand a kid that Grand Canyon's recruiting? Right. They can offer a full. We can only offer a partial. Right. Because we can only offer that right now because we don't raise enough from the community to provide full scholarships at the maximum allowed. Right. So when you're a kid, what do you want to go with? Do you yeah. want to go with the partial or the full? 
Right. It's a competition thing for us too. Yeah. Uh, and we're all recruiting some of the same kids when it comes to these sports because we're regionally based. Yeah. Yeah, and the conference, you know, all those kids are kind of recruiting at, recruited at the same level. So those are kind of the numbers that we wanted to really hammer home and show people that, that look, this is, we're not just making this up going, we just need more money. No, we are literally here. We've done research. We've checked this stuff out. Believe us. Trust us. We're experts. Um, we, we've looked into this stuff, and we know where, you know where we need to be in order to be competitive. And, and also, But we've also shared the stories of a lot of the kids, too, and that's been a lot of fun to kind of get into their stories and really what – you know, their scholarship has meant to them in this past month. We've talked about that quite a bit. Yes, and that's really what we want to tell people. I mean, this is what you're investing in. You're not investing into a basketball or a uniform or shoes or a new building. When you invest in the scholarship fund, you're investing in somebody getting their education, somebody that's appreciative, somebody that might be a first generation or somebody who might not have had that opportunity because of wherever their parents are in their lives. It's building up people who might not have an opportunity they do are able to play a sport. Yeah. I mean, they have that niche for them. So they become ambassadors to the university too, which yeah. is national exposure for us sure. and Bakersfield. So absolutely. And, and they, you know, we have the ones that go on to do a lot of athletic great things. I mean, Tana Outland sat in that chair last week and I asked her the question after she signs her WNBA, uh, you know, deal with the Sparks as, you know, what did your scholarship mean? Like, I wouldn't have this chance. I wouldn't have been in college. I wouldn't have uh, played and set these records and gone on to the WNBA without it. So, um, you know, those stories like that. Then you have the kids that just they just graduate, and and uh, you know one of them I think of is our is our senior thrower on the uh, track team with uh, Brian Wilmert. He's going to be a math teacher, but I guarantee you he's going to be a uh, really darn good math teacher and be connected to the university moving forward, and he'll probably stay in the area. Yeah, and that's what we wanted to share with people. Yeah, uh, we have so many great stories, and I feel when people meet these kids, talk to these kids, they open up and they realize that it is really an investment in somebody's future not just money. Yeah. We're appreciative of all of our donors. It's amazing what we have been able to do. Uh, and by no means are we begging as much as we're just saying, hey, here's what, here's the deal. Yeah. We want to be as competitive as possible. We want to bring in the best and the brightest. This is what we need to do right. uh, in order to get there. And it, we've been doing very well with what we've had. <laughs> yeah. Really well. For sure. And For it's sure. those donors that continue to support that really have helped us get to this level. Yeah. Now we just need to push it a little further so we can keep competing. Yeah. And once people are in, once people are in, I mean, they're, they're in, they want to continue to, to support because they realize what a great cause it is and, and things like that. So yeah. that's the best part. And we're showing them where their money's going. Yeah. We're letting the students talk to them. We're telling them about the students. We're showing the progress. Yeah. Uh, I think the GPA. Right. Showing that progress. When you invest in it, you're going to see where it's leading to. It's exactly. leading to, to better grades, outperforming the regular students. And these kids are asked to do a lot Yeah. on top of just schoolwork. Uh, I, I met with one of our golfers yesterday. She works full-time. <laughs> she has a partial scholarship. Yeah. She just competed at a, at, at a tournament you know, for the WAC, and they did well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people just don't realize that. Right. Absolutely. No, there's a lot of stories out there, and some we continue to share. And there's a uh, one final kind of social media campaign, and this one you have to you have to either renew or donate to be a part of. But uh, please do so. You will. Uh, yeah, and, and it's for a. Uh, it's it's also the prize involved is a gold card, which is basically you know free admission for a year. For a year. It's one of the, those are rare. Those, those are for are. VIPs. Those are for VIPs, and and usually for uh, four year student athletes. So student athletes. I I mm-hmm. was given the okay. No, it's awesome. I really. But uh, people have to. Got to step up for that one. So yes. <laughs> it'll <Yep>, continue. So. <laughs> Josiah, thanks for joining us. Great job on Runner April. It'll continue through the end of the week, and uh, we'll definitely be talking to you again uh, as you get closer to uh, to your goals, which I'm sure you're going to shatter. Thank you for your not help, Not just Corey. break, but shatter. Thank you for your help. I- I'm-, I'm extending the ceiling. Like You're I not like just going to break. You're, you're going to shatter it. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. That's... Extra pressure. You need, more, you need more pressure? I got it. Shatter it. I got this. I got <laughs> All this. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Josiah. All right, we're going to step away. When we come back, Carnell Grimes is going to join us. He's a good story. And uh, by the way, he just threw the javelin uh, two, at the, hit the 200 mark. That's pretty cool. We'll talk about that. When we get back, it's Roadrunner Rundown. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. Bakersfield Christian Services! Stop now! Find And no matter what school you go to, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. 
Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Introducing the Next Gen Home by Lennar. Your family is constantly evolving. The kids move out, the kids move back. Maybe grandma moves in. You need a home that will grow with you and your family. The Next Gen Home by Lennar has a separate private living space with a bathroom, kitchenette, and entrance all its own, but still connected to the rest of the house. It's a home within a home. New models now open in the Central Valley. To learn more, visit a Lennar Welcome Home Center near you or visit Lennar.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. Support CSUB Roadrunner Athletics at the 43rd Annual Spring Barbecue, Thursday, May 14th at the Accardo Center. Join us for dinner featuring Harris Ranch, New York Steak, and Teriyaki Chicken. And stay for live entertainment featuring Foster Campbell and Friends, along with special guest Truxton Mile. Tickets are $30 in advance and available at Mexicali. Bonds, all lengthwise locations. The 43rd Annual CSUB Athletics Spring Barbecue, Thursday, May 14th from 5.30 to 9 at the Accardo Center. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference. CSU Bakersfield. And welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. Uh, my thanks to Josiah Castro. Again, check out our Facebook page. You can see all the Roadrunner uh, Scholarship Fund posts. And uh, one more contest still rolling through the uh, end of April. And, of course, the fundraising continues. So uh, go to GoRunners.com slash donate. Find out more about the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. And, of course, uh, my thanks to Joey Sanchez and David Metzger joining us in the first segment as well, talking about CSUB baseball. Our next guest, uh, well, he briefly played baseball, and then he said, I'm going to throw the javelin. Now I'm going to throw the javelin. I'm going to throw the javelin over 200 feet. And he did it this past weekend at the Bulldog Invitational in Fresno, Carnell Grimes. Carnell, good to see you, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, I know the 200 feet was haunting you. We were sharing the story off the air. So you were like, okay, your last meet before this was like 190, what was it? 199.10. 199.10. So you were, you know, two inches two short. Two inches short. Yeah. So I'm hearing in the weight room, because my <laughs> office is so conveniently located next to the weight room, by the way, um, that I hear when you guys are lifting, the guys, the other guys on your team are yelling at you, two inches, yeah. two inches. I mean, they were really, they were giving it to you for a couple weeks. Yeah, they were just giving me a hard time because I was literally two inches short from throwing 200. <laughs> so it was, it was a big deal. It's a big deal. And, and, and they definitely helped motivate you because not only did you hit 200 feet, you went 204. 10 in your uh, in your throw um i mean or 204 5 in your throw on saturday i yeah. mean you beat it by four well, well you beat it by let's see you got your two inches and you got uh, four additional feet or so yeah exactly and, and the crazy part about it is actually on my second throw i almost like blew out my knee <laughs> so it's like coach i was like looking at me and like i had three trainers over me saying like i'm gonna shut you down and i'm like no coach like <laughs> i haven't hit 200 yet like if i'm gonna do it today's gonna be the day and then on my last throw literally is when i threw 204 nice and uh, knee okay i take it yeah knees knees okay it's it's just a little strained but i'll be fine is it how violent is the throw i know a lot of track throws are pretty violent i mean how violent is the javelin throw i mean extremities things like that some it's really uh, the speed that i'm carrying now uh, with my technique is can be detrimental if i don't hit the right placement mm -hmm. and so like my second throw I, uh, my foot was placed a little off, and so that kind of like caused my knee, my kneecap to 
move laterally a little yeah. bit. So. Well, good. I'm glad to see you're okay. I'm glad you got 20405. You finished uh, fourth in that meet. You became the, the second guy in the WAC this year to get over 200 feet. So you're second overall right now in the conference. Uh, you were the first person. And I was wrong earlier. I said 2010. I just uh, It was my dyslexia, apparently. Since 2001, you're the, la- you're the first guy in 14 years to do this. I mean, that's got to that's be pretty cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. I, I'm very honored by Coach Al training me and pushing me to my uh, limits and, and coaching me to be able to break 200 because it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it hasn't been done in a very long time. And, and uh, I mean, you, you we've kind of followed your progress over the years. And, I, you know, obviously you started playing baseball as a freshman a little bit. And then what kind of, uh, you know, motivated you to say, I'm going to go to track and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dedicate, and I know you've done some other events, but – De- the javelin's been the one that you've really focused on and really developed. And what was it about the javelin that kind of drew you to that? And, and you know, what made you want to work so hard to, to be successful? It's because uh, being a pitcher from the baseball uh, aspect, a uh, baseball player, just like the same thing, like javelin was just kind of running and pitching. So I was still throwing mm-hmm. and stuff. And I'm, I had a solid arm as a baseball player, as an athlete. And so just transferring over to javelin, uh, Coach House also potential in me, believed in me and, I honestly actually enjoy the job. I think it's very fun to throw, so yeah, it just motivated me to be better. Yeah, and uh, you're talking uh, Alan Kolatz, who was a former head coach. Now he's just kind of – I mean, what a great guy to be able to stick around and as uh, just deciding, you know, I don't want to be a full-time coach anymore, but I'd like to still hang out and, and, and coach the throwers. Um, and you can obviously see his area of expertise since since Marshall has brought him in to coach the throwers. How well the throwers have done having a guy with his expertise uh, helping you guys out. Yeah, he's he's a phenomenal coach. I, I really am very honored to be and humbled to be coached by him because not only do I throw the jab, I throw the hammer too. So I'm like, he taught me to throw the hammer this year, and I'm right now sitting at sixth place in our conference for the hammer. The hammer scares me. Did you see my hammer <laughs> throw attempts? It's pretty bad. Yes, I have. The hammer can be. It's kind of it's like a medieval dangerous. weapon. Like, <laughs> I mean, I know the javelin's sharp and all, but I mean the hammer. It's like you can brain yourself with that. Yeah, the hammer. You just gotta stay clear of the path of the hammer, and you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and, uh, and again, you continue to have a, a solid season. And and uh, what's it been like for you? I mean, you've been around now. Uh, you redshirted a year, so been around since 2011 uh, for the most part. 2010, 2011. Um, you know, what's your time been like in Bakersfield, and uh, you know your development as a student athlete. Uh, I've enjoyed my time here at Bakersfield uh, as a as a student in the classroom and as an athlete on the field. Just because, like I said, a uh, phenomenal coaching staff on the track team here at CSB with Coach Al, Coach Wentworth, uh, Brendan in the weight room pushing me, and then my teachers and my chemistry classes pushing me to be just a better student, challenging me mentally. I I just really have enjoyed my time here at Bakersfield. You are a uh, you brought it up, but you're a biochemistry major. Yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> how's how's that been? I mean, uh, you know, during your uh, you know during your time, obviously that's a tough major. You got a lot of stuff going on, so yeah. uh, you know what's that uh, what's that been like, and uh, what are your plans kind of for the future? It's been kind of challenging, just you know, being a student athlete. You know, still have to get all my schoolwork done, and still having the same hundred percent effort on the field, and trying to work hard and get better. But I, overall, I think I've accomplished. It. I just actually finished my senior sim project uh, for last Friday so that went well and then my future plans is to apply for grad school to get my PhD and then eventually become a research scientist in the medical field okay nice beautiful see this is but this is exactly what we were talking about with Josiah a few minutes ago you've got your student athletes that yes some of them might go on they might be play professionally whatever they're doing but then you've got guys like 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 you who are going who had a phenomenal career here at CSUB you're a biochemistry major. You're going to be a doctor. You're going to be, I mean, like, I mean, the, the, and, and you will, I mean, stay connected to the program down the road for sure, right? Yes, for sure. I really enjoy our, our track program. And next year, I'm thinking about just coming back and like kind of helping coach out with the throws. Awesome. No, that's great. And uh, and you're a you're a Kern County guy from uh, from Roseman out yes. there in the out there in the desert. So uh, how, how's uh, what was life in Roseman like growing up? Very hot and cold <laughs> with nothing to do, <laughs> but play sports. So. Yeah. There you go. There there you go. Yeah, you've always been a roadrunner, right? I mean, yes. that's the uh, high school mascot in Roseman as well. So, uh, no, I'm glad things have worked out well for you, Carnell, and uh, congratulations. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really, I'm, I'm, you got what the WAC tournament and or the WAC championships in a week or so. Yes, All in right, Utah. So let's, uh, let's, 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 
let's bring home the let's bring home the championship. Yeah, I'm trying to bring home the gold. That's that's the goal. That's what we want to see. We'd love <laughs> to see it. Well, good, good luck to you then, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be we'll be tracking that here in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank All right, you. Carnell Grimes here on Roadrunner Rundown, and again, folks, you can get the show anytime online at GoRunners.com. You can also check us out on Facebook, facebookcom CSUB Roadrunners on Twitter and Instagram at CSUB Athletics. Next week on the program, uh, the softball team is getting ready for their uh, WAC championships. We'll uh, talk with them about that as uh, they head to Las Cruces for the WAC tournament. Also, uh, track and we have their championships as well. So the seasons are starting to wind it down, and we'll have coverage right here, of course, on Roadrunner Rundown. Get your tickets, and you saw some of the commercials earlier. Hit up our website, GoRunners.com. More information about the spring barbecue coming up on May the 14th as well, and that will benefit the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund. Thanks so much for joining us, folks. We will catch you next week. This has been Roadrunner Rundown. Uh-huh.